it was no more than once upon a time when a poor woodcutter lived in a small house at the edge of a huge dark forest. Now the woodcutter lived with his wife and his two young children, a boy called Hansel and a little girl called Gretel. It was hard enough for him to feed them all at the best of times, but these were the worst of times, times of famine and hunger and starvation, and the woodcutter was lucky if he could get his hands on even a simple loaf of bread. Night after hungry night, he lay in his bed next to his thin wife, and he worried so much that he tossed and he turned, and he sighed and he mumbled and moaned, and he just couldn't sleep at all. Oh, wife, 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 what are we going to do? How can we feed our two poor children when we've hardly enough for ourselves? Oh, wife, wife, what can be done? And as he fretted and sweated in the darkness, back came the bony voice of his wife, a voice as fierce as famine. Listen to me, husband. Tomorrow at first light, we'll take the children into the forest, right into the cold, black heart of it. We'll make a fire for them there and give them each one last morsel of bread. Then we'll pretend to go off to our work and we'll leave them there all by themselves. They'll never be able to find their way back home on their own. We'll be rid of them for good and only have to worry about feeding ourselves. No, no, wife, I can't do that. How could I have the heart to leave young Hansel and Gretel in the forest? The wild beasts would soon sniff them out and eat them alive. You fool! Do you want all four of us to starve to death? You might as well start smoothing the wood for our coffins. And she gave the poor, heart-sore woodcutter no peace until he agreed to do as she said. Now, Hansel and Gretel had been so hungry that night, they hadn't been able to sleep either and they'd heard every cruel word of their mother's terrible plan. Gretel cried bitter, salt tears, and said to Hansel, Oh, now we're finished. Don't cry, Gretel. Don't be sad. I'll find a way to save us. And when their father and mother had finally gone to sleep, Hansel got up, put on his coat, opened the back door, and crept out into the midnight hour. There was a bright, sparkling moonlight outside, and the white pebbles on the ground shone like silver coins and precious jewels. Hansel bent down, filled his empty pockets with as many pebbles as he could carry. Don't worry, Gretel. You can go to sleep now. We'll be fine, I promise. And he got back into his bed. At dawn, before the sun had properly risen, their mother came and woke the two children. Get up, you lazy scraps. We're going into the forest to chop wood. Then she gave each of them a miserable mouthful of bread. There's your lunch. Think yourselves lucky and don't eat it all at once, because there's nothing else. Gretel put the bread in her apron pocket, because Hansel's pockets were crammed with pebbles. Then the whole family set off along the path to the forest. Hansel, what are you trailing behind for and looking at? Keep up with the rest of us. Sorry, Father. I'm just looking back at my white kitten. It's sitting up there on our roof, saying goodbye. You stupid boy. That's not your kitten. It's just the light of the morning sun glinting on the chimney. Now come on. But of course, Hansel hadn't been looking at anything at all. He'd been throwing the white pebbles from his pockets onto the path. The forest was immense and gloomy. When they had reached the middle, the woodcutter said, Now, Hansel, now Gretel, gather up some wood and I'll make a nice fire to keep you warm. Hansel and Gretel collected a big pile of firewood, and when it was set alight and the flames were like burning tongues, their mother said, Now lie down by the fire and rest. We're going further into the forest to chop wood. When we're finished working... We'll come back and get you. The children sat by the fire, and when midday came, they chewed on their small portions of bread. 
They could hear the blows of the woodcutter's axe nearby, and they thought that their father was close. But it wasn't an axe. It was just a branch that he had tied to an old withered tree, and the wind was blowing it to and fro, to and fro. After they had waited and waited and waited, the children's eyes grew as heavy as worry. And when the moon had risen, casting its brilliant magical light, Hansel took his little sister by the hand and followed the pebbles. They walked all through the night, and at daybreak, they knocked at the door of their father's house. You naughty children! Why did you sleep so long in the forest? We thought you were never coming home. But their father was pleased to have them back again, for he had been grief-stricken at leaving them all by themselves in the forest. Not long afterwards, times became very hard again, and the famine bit deeply and savagely into their lives. One night, when they all lay in bed, with empty stomachs, the children heard their mother's ravenous voice again. There's no more food left except half a loaf of bread. And when that's gone, that'll be the end of all of us. The children must go, I tell you. Tomorrow, first thing, we'll take them even deeper, deeper, right into the belly of the forest, so they won't possibly be able to find their way out. It's our only way of saving ourselves. You did it before, so you'll do it again. You did it before. So you'll do it again. He did it before, so he'll do it again. He did it before, so he'll do it again. And in the end, the woodcutter gave in. Once more, Hansel waited till his parents fell asleep, and then he got up and tried to get out to collect his pebbles like the last time. But the door had been locked and bolted, and Hansel couldn't get out no matter how hard he tried. He had to go back to bed empty-handed and comfort his little sister. No more tears, Gretel. Just try to sleep. I know somehow I'll find something to help us. Carefully, one tiny crumb at a time, Hansel laid a trail of bread on the path. You two sit here and wait, and if you get tired you can go to sleep. Your father and I are going further off to chop wood. And in the evening, when we're finished, we'll come and fetch you. Don't worry, Gretel. When the moon rises, we'll see the breadcrumbs I dropped. They'll show us our way. But they didn't find a single breadcrumb. Because all of the thousands of birds that fly about in the forest had pecked them away and eaten them. Don't panic. We'll find our way anyway. But they didn't find it. They walked all night and all the following day, and by the next evening they were still hopelessly lost in the bowels of the forest. What's worst, they were hungrier than they've ever been in their skinny young lives. It was now the third morning since they had left their father. The famished, thirsty children forced themselves to walk again, but they only wandered further and further into the forest and they knew that unless they found help very soon, they would die of hunger. When it was midday, they saw a beautiful white bird singing on a branch. The bird's song was so enchanting that Hansel and Gretel stopped to listen to it. As soon as the song was over, the bird flapped its creamy wings and flew off in front of them. They followed it till it landed on the roof of a little house when Hansel and Gretel got closer, they saw the house had bread wolves and a roof made of cake and windows made of clear bright sugar. Look, this will do us. That's wonderful luck. I'll try a slice of the roof, Gretel, and you can start on the window. I bet it will taste scrumptiously sweet. Hansel stretched up and broke off a bit of the roof to see what it tasted like. Gretel snapped off a piece of window pane and nibbled away. Suddenly they heard a thin little voice calling from inside. Stop your nibbling, little rat. It's my house you're gnawing at. But 
the chomping children chanted. We're only the wind going past, gently blowing on roof and glass. And they just went on munching away. Hansel thought the roof was absolutely delicious and pulled off a great big slab of it. Gretel bashed out a whole round window pane and sat down and had a wonderful chewy time. Then suddenly the door opened and an old, old woman, bent double on a crutch, came creeping out. Well, well, you sweet little things. <laughs> How did you get here? <laughs> Come in and stay with me. You'll come to no harm. She took the children by the hand and led them into the tempting house. Then she gave them a wonderful meal of creamy milk and mouth-watering pancakes with sugar and chocolate and apples and nuts. After Hansel and Gretel had eaten as much as they could, she made up two soft, comfy little beds with the best white linen, and Hansel and Gretel lay down to sleep. But the old woman was only pretending to be kind, for she was really a cruel and evil witch who lay in wait for children and had only built her bread house with its cake roof to trap them. When a child fell into her power, she would kill it, cook it and eat it, and that was her favourite feasting day. Witches have red eyes with which they can't see very far, but they have a powerful sense of smell as good as an animal's, and they can smell when anyone comes near them. So. As Hansel and Gretel had approached her little house in the woods, she'd cackled a spiteful laugh and said, <laughs> Here's two for my belly who won't escape. This will make a tasty morsel for me to swallow. <laughs> Get up, you lazy wretch. Get water and cook a good meal for your brother. He's locked up outside in the shed, and I want him fattened up. When he's nice and plump, <laughs> I'm going to eat him. <laughs> day after day, the best meals were cooked for Hansel while oh, poor Gretel had to survive on crab shells. Every morning, the horrible witch groped and fumbled her way out to the shed and shrieked, Hansel, stick out your finger for me to feel if you're plump. But clever Hansel held out a little bone instead. The old crone's red witchy eyes couldn't see it. She thought it was Hansel's finger and was furious and surprised that he went on and on not getting plump. After four weeks of this, she lost her patience completely. Now then, Gretel, jump to and cook him one last meal. Tomorrow, whether he's plump or skinny, fat or lean, I'm going to cut Hansel's throat with my sharpest knife <laughs> and cook him. <laughs> oh, you can cut out the bawling. It will do you no good. First, we'll bake some bread. I've already heated the oven and kneaded the dough. Crawl inside and tell me if it's hot enough for the bread to go in. I don't know how to do it. How can I get inside there? Oh, you foolish goose. The opening's big enough for you. I could get into it myself. Look! She's dead! And Hansel jumped out, free as a bird released from the cage. 
and they both danced and cheered and hugged and kissed. There was nothing to be afraid of anymore, so they went into the witch's house, opened up all her cupboards, which were stuffed to bursting with pearls and precious stones. These are much better than pebbles. I'll take some home too. And she filled her apron full to the brim. Right, now let's get out of this witchy forest for good. When the children had walked for a while, they came to the edge of a big, wide river. I can't see a bridge anywhere. We won't be able to get across. And there's no boat either. But look, there's a white duck swimming along. I'm sure it'll help us across if I ask it nicely. Excuse me, little white duck. Gretel and Hansel seem to be stuck. A bridge or a boat is what we lack. Will you carry us over on your back? Sure enough, the duck came swimming and quacking towards them, and Hansel jumped quickly on its back and told Gretel to sit behind him. But sensible Gretel said, No, that'll be too heavy for the duck. I think it should take us across one at a time. And that is exactly what the kind little duck did. So Hansel and Gretel walked happily on, and the wood became more and more familiar until at last they saw their father's house in the distance. They began to run, 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 charged into the kitchen and flung their arms around their father's neck. The poor unhappy man had not had one happy moment since he had abandoned the children in the forest and his wife had died and was buried. But Gretel shook out the contents of her apron making the precious little stones twinkle and shine upon the floor. Now it was certain that all their troubles were over, and the grateful woodcutter and Hansel and Gretel lived on together at the edge of the forest and were happy ever after. <laughs>